Hey y'all, it's David, the Georgia photographer. Today, I want to review this behemoth. This is a 200 millimeter lens that fits the Minolta platform. I've got it on my Fuji X-T3 with an adapter from KF Concepts, but this is an all metal lens. Let me just take this off the camera so I can show you the lens proper. All right, I'm back. This monster is a Prince brand lens. At least that's the lens cap. On the inside it says Rexitar Auto PMC it's an f 3.3 max aperture it's got a prince brand filter on it look at that it's a beautiful big old hunk of glass it's a 200 millimeter f 3.3 it has a built-in lens hood from the throwback of the 80s when you would get stuff like this as part of the deal i don't think it locks like some of the nikon lenses no it's just friction but it's still a, a great attachment to have the lens caps are aluminum type with the strip of felt on the inside. It just sticks over the ends. Actually sticks on there pretty good. Yeah, works really well. And then it's got, of course it's just got a standard bayonet on the back. But it has no electronics, but it does have aperture control right here. You know, you've got the little feeler to where you have an auto, like a aperture priority camera. It can control the aperture. It's all metal construction, so it's real heavy. It's probably a pound or two easily, probably closer to two pounds. There's a lot of there's a lot of metal and glass in here. It has one, two, three, four. It's got six aperture blades. The aperture ring on it has it goes one and a third stops if I did this math correctly from wide open to the first click. The clicks are kind of mushy. They're not real pronounced. It stops on them, but you kind of, you wonder if you're in the center of the click. It does function fairly well. well. It's well made. The focus throw is a little over a half a revolution from minimum to maximum focus. This lens will focus from infinity all the way down to minimum focus distance on this is about 10 feet. Yeah, it stops pretty, pretty much on 10 feet. So you can't get anything closer than that. You know, it's a telephoto lens. It's meant to take the pictures of things a, a good distance off. I can just imagine how much, how big it would have been had they allowed it to focus even closer. It would have been enormous. Front of the lens does telescope in and out when it focuses, but it does not rotate. So if you wanted to put like ND filters or graduated NDs or something, they would stay in plane as you turn to focus. But it does pump air in and out. It being this heavy, it's missing a function that I would have expected to find on it. And that is a tripod foot mount. It doesn't have a provision for one anywhere. It should have at least a quarter 20 thread or something on the bottom so that you could mount it by the lens because this lens is heavier than the camera, significantly heavier than the camera. All right, the rendition of this lens, shot wide open, it's a little bit soft. I've I found that at 3.3 that you just can't quite get it sharp. It looks really good in portraiture, but it's just, it's just not as sharp as modern lenses by any stretch of word, but stop down to F5.6, it sharpens way up. I mean, check out this portrait of Teresa and look at the background blur. Shot on an X-T3, everybody complains about how you can't get bokeh on a crop sensor camera shooting portraiture or whatever. That looks like some pretty creamy bokeh to me. The focus barrel has a nice heavy rubberized grip so it's easy to throw. It's a nice smooth throw. I found it on my eBay. It says that it has a Nikon mount, which it does not. It's straight up a Minolta mount, by the way. It says I paid $6 for it, no reserve. I got this lens for six bucks. <laughs> so would I recommend this lens? Only if you was gonna play, you know, not for anything serious. I mean, it does do wonderful portraits and it does have that vintage lens look. It does have some artifacts and like really direct sun. So right now it's overcast, it just rained here. So I had perfect like giant softbox conditions. 
and it worked really well if you was to try and use it for harsh sunlight portraiture it's probably going to give you a bunch of ghosts or flares or issues like that because it is a fairly inexpensive lens the machine work is uncanny the the manufacturer of the lens is gorgeous everything about it is just beautiful all the all the tool work everything but it's it's lackluster wide open but it stopped down a couple stops and it works really really well i don't know what that used to say there was a sticker there. i bet it was one of those tested stickers what it kind of looks like but yeah i mean if you can grab one like i did for six dollars it's worth playing with but i wouldn't give much over that for it so with that this is dave the georgia photographer and i appreciate you watching hit that like button if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't you know you know what the bell does everybody does at this point so with that i appreciate you watching we'll see y'all next time get your camera out and go take a picture or something all right we'll see y'all All right, I think from now on, I'm not gonna really buy the super bottom end budget lenses anymore. I've got plenty of those in the repertoire at this point to see that you can gamble on a $5 lens and it might come out okay. It might not, but you know, it's five bucks. So if you wanna gamble on a $5 lens, you're not really losing much. I mean, you know, what? couple of mountain views or you know you see my point you you can get into these things pretty cheap so i don't think i'm going to do any more of those but what i am going to do is focus on the major manufacturers i'm going to move over and do a bunch of minolta glass because minolta seems to make really nice glass it's almost or as good as nickel glass from what i've seen and I might actually do some Canon lenses. Don't say that too loud. Somebody might hear you. I currently own zero Canon equipment. I've been looking at them AE-1s. You can get them things pretty cheap. Not, not as cheap as Minolta lamp cameras, but you can get them pretty cheap. So I may play with a little bit of old Canon glass. Who knows? I don't guess I should be completely opposed to it. I see a lot of people shooting with Canon equipment and it seems to be working really well for them. But what I want to do is kind of build that base of reviews to where there's plenty for information for people to look at. You know, and my reviews are not like technical test charts and things like that. I want the review to be more use-based and you know, it's, it's an opinion piece anyway, except for the technical flaws of the lens. You know, like this Rexitar lens. It's okay lens. Five bucks, six dollars. It ain't bad for six dollars, but when it was new, it was probably significantly more than that. You know, I would have been upset had I bought that lens 40 years ago for six hundred dollars, you know. Whew, that would have been grueling. I mean, you having to shoot it at f5.6, you know, that completely precludes using it in low light at all. You know, it would just been it would have been a lot nicer to had something some kind of information database like this that you could draw on so you know i'm gonna do that and the campground is quiet since it rained it come a forever toad strangler a while ago i was i was trapped in the bathhouse for the duration of the rain and because i was not going to walk back across that campground with it pouring buckets of water out in between me and the camper so i waited it out in the bathhouse <laughs> I'm looking for something interesting to shoot this film on. I'm wanting to shoot two rolls of this film to test out the two different modes on this little Minolta camera, but I catch myself being more cautious about what I photograph now that I know that I've only got 24 frames. More interesting if you got humans in the frame, you know, and nobody's outside now that it rained. So, I guess I'll just put this little camera back away and we'll go get Gus and see her. Maybe I'll get some pictures when we get downtown with them. We're on, we're way over on the east side of Chattanooga, over on the other side of Missionary Ridge over here. You know, this. Here's something kind of interesting about this campground. It has a very Civil War theme. See, it's two Vicksburg Drive. Nathaniel Bedford Forest Drive. 
all of the roads on this side of the campground are confederate generals names you cross this road and this is the north side of the campground see and that's george mcclellan that's a.e burnside these are all union generals <laughs> <laughs> they've got a very specific motif going here it's pretty slick but the permanent residents stay on the north side and the temporary campers stay on the south side of the campground and this road divides it it's pretty smooth but it's a nice campground it's well kept the pictures the other night were night photos i was catching people trying to get people going in and out of this bathhouse right here but yeah that's my overall plan for the reviews going forward is uh I'll probably review the odd lens from time to time, but for the most part, I'm just going to stick to the, the heavy hitters because you can get those really cheap too, and, and everybody recognizes them, and they seem to be built better anyway. So with that, I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye.